Chris from Good Roads. Welcome back down to the dungeon. Today, I want to talk to you about base material for skis and snowboards. This is a material called P-Tex. P-Tex is a material that a lot of the bases for the skis and snowboards that we ride out there are made of. But P-Tex is a name brand. It's like Band-Aid or Q-Tip. People don't call those self-adhering bandages or cotton swabs. They call them Band-Aids or Q-Tips. Same thing with P-Tex. What P-Tex really is, the generic term for it, is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. That's a pretty long name. So let's break it down and we can break it down backwards to make it really easy. Polyethylene is a family of plastics. There's a lot of different types of polyethylene out there. The ultra high molecular weight part of it just means that it's really dense. It means it's a really heavy polyethylene and a really hard one. Now, if you go to buy this stuff from a ski or snowboard building supply company for hobbyists, it's pretty expensive. At least I thought so when I bought in the material for my powder surfer last year. So I wanted to see if there were other options around. I also saw listed on those sites a material called HDPE. If we break it down the same way, all that means is high density polyethylene. One is ultra high molecular weight and one is just high density. So a slightly softer plastic, but still in the same family and it's sold as a base material. And here's where things started to get exciting because HDPE is everywhere. Here are a couple things that are probably in your house right now that are made of HDPE. Shopping bags, milk cartons, milk jugs, bottle caps. Those weird inflatable packing bags that nobody knows what to do with. Glue bottles? Glue bottles! In addition to that, you've got medicine bottles, you've got bottles for things like shampoo, a lot of different food containers. Anything with the recycling symbol and the number two in it is gonna be made of HDPE. And this is just stuff that we throw into the recycling, or even worse, that we throw into the trash. And that's the material that snowboard bases and top sheets are made of. So what I wanted to do was to see if I could reuse some of that material that would otherwise be garbage, that has a price point of zero, because it was getting thrown out anyway, and make some snowboard bases. So the first thing, the first step, was to get a lot of material, and I went out on recycling day, and in the interest of having lots of bright colors, I raided the local laundry mat, because bottles for laundry detergent come in all different, very bright colors. So I brought them all home and I sorted them by color, but before I did that I actually did a couple of experiments to see how we might be able to work this material to get it into the format that we need, which is a big sheet, or a number of smaller sheets. I did some tests with a milk carton to see if you could flatten out compound curves, because a lot of these bottles, when they're made, have these curves in them that don't curve in one direction, they curve in two directions, and those shapes tend not to lay down flat very easily. And I also did some tests to see if you could fuse two pieces of plastic together. I used a heat gun for those and they did not work. With that in mind, I was thinking I had to work from relatively flat stock. So I went in and cut out all of the flat planes on the bottles, thinking that I'd have a nice flat place to start from. Then I washed them, filled up my tub and I soaked them and drained them three times. I think that was clean enough. Our house smelled like flowers for like a week. And after that, I spent a whole lot of time taking those big flat panels that were really irregularly shaped because they were things like the side of a bottle or they would look like the shape of the different company's logos and cutting them into regular strips that I could then fit together like a mosaic. Here is that final finished mosaic. I ran into a couple issues after everything was, was fitted together and my design was kind of laid out. I did another set of experiments with an iron to see if you could flatten or fuse pieces with that and those experiments worked. I was able to take the individual strips of plastic and fuse them together into a single piece. And that was my hope for this whole thing. I was gonna fit my mosaic together and then go and fuse it all into a single sheet. 
so that I could sand off the side with all the labels on it because some of them are fused plastic. They're not like paper labels. One side has to get sanded anyway to make smooth, so I figured I would just do that and then I would be able to flame treat the other side. If you buy PTEX or HDPE from a source that's meant for skis or snowboard, one side of it will have some tooth to it. It'll be a little bit more rough to the touch than the other side. And that's really important because when you're putting a board together, you're using a resin, and resin doesn't adhere to plastics. So what has to happen is the side that is getting attached to your board or your skis needs to be flame treated. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't really understand why. But it's not heat treated, it's flame treated. You have to run a flame over the plastic. The closest thing I've found to an explanation is that something about the flame causes the surface of the plastic to oxidize, which either changes its physical properties, it makes it really rough, or it actually oxidizes the plastic, it rusts the plastic, which, I don't know, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you know what that's all about, leave a comment below because I'm, I'm curious about what's actually going on with the chemistry. Short version of the story is if you run a flame over the plastic, it'll bond to epoxy, whereas without that, it won't. So I was hoping I would be able to have this whole sheet so that I could just flame treat one side. That is not gonna work because even though my experiments were successful, when I went to go bond all the pieces together with an iron in my final piece, it didn't work. All these gaps, that's no good, man. That's no good. There were less gaps before. This is the part that hasn't been heated. No gaps. Gaps. No gaps, the stuff shrinks. Um, they pulled apart from each other, they didn't stick to each other, and now it's even a little bit more rough and wrinkly than it was before. So, so that stinks. But I'm still, I'm still gonna try it. I'm going to flame treat the side with all the labels on it. If a couple of the pieces come out, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. With any luck, it'll just work anyway. The next thing I need to do, or want to do, is actually cut all of my pieces of plastic a little bit closer to their final shape so that when I go and run a torch over this, I don't have little pieces of paper, tape, sticking out waiting to catch on fire. Because uh, we want some fire, but not too much fire. We don't want a lot of fire, we want some very small controlled fire. So I'm gonna grab this. This is the template that I used for the first powder surfer, which is the last video I put out. If you guys wanna check that out, just a plain wooden one that didn't have a base on it, but it worked really well. I'll leave a link to that down below. It's also the template that I put together the mosaic over so that I was only using about as much plastic as I needed to. So I'm just going to line this back up with the plastic that's there and then cut kind of close to the line. We'll take it from there. Okay. And this template, it's just a paper template that I printed out on a home printer and did a poor man's lamination of by covering it in packing tape. Didn't leave myself a whole lot of wiggle room. The knife would work too, but the scissors is just gonna uh, make this a little bit faster, I think. And I'm going to leave some space outside of the outline. This is more about getting the tape and the loose ends of the plastic out of the way than it is about cutting the exact shape. The other part of this that's kind of nerve wracking is I don't know what this looks like yet because it's all broken up by the different label things. I don't even know what this pattern is gonna look like until we pull the board out of the press. Ooh, makes me nervous. But you know what? Surprise is part of the fun. That's, that's fine, that guy can just get cut out. At the end, when it's all done, You guys can see the size of the flame a little bit better there. Oh man. That's just melting it. No more melting. I'm a little suspicious of this at this point because I'm just watching the light reflect off the surface of the plastic, which if the surface finish on the plastic changed, 
it would reflect differently. It would get less shiny or more shiny, but it's but nothing's changing. It doesn't feel any different to the touch. This is like widely accepted to be a part of preparing plastic to make bases. So I'm gonna just run the torch over this really slowly without melting anything, and I'll give it a light sanding. I hope it works. If anybody knows what the story is with flame treating plastics, either ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or um, HDPE for bonding it with resins, leave a comment below and let me know because uh, if anything this is just making me suspicious of it. Maybe it doesn't do anything. But we'll find out. So let's, uh, let's do this. I'm putting the flame over the plastic. I'm not pointing the flame into it. I've heard that that's all you need to do. Kind of treating it like a spray paint, making sure that my strokes overlap. It is, you know, it is moving a little bit, so it's at least heating the plastic. Um, I'm just going to go through and do one more pass around the edges because those are the parts that we really want to stick. Again, any plastics or resin experts in the audience, if you know what this is supposed to do, what I'm doing wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong, I would really appreciate it if you left a comment explaining what flame treating plastic is supposed to do and whether or not I'm doing it right. But uh, in lieu of that, I'm gonna take some fine grit sandpaper and just do a pass on this because even if we don't have that extra chemical bond, giving it some roughness will help the resin stick to it. And then it's done, it's ready to go into the layup and we can test whether to see whether or not this technique works. I just want something that's abrasive enough to rough up the surface not necessarily to wear it down. So there we go. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. We've got a snowboard base pieced together from sheets of plastic that have been recycled. We tried to flame treat it. Don't know if it did anything, but we gave it a shot and hit it with a light sanding to make sure that it's got a nice grippy surface that we'll be able to bond to the snowboard wood building. In the next video, we're gonna make a hybrid horizontal laminated core for this. This is still gonna be a powder surface, so that board will have some binding inserts, but I'm not gonna do edges, and we are gonna do some fiberglass work with it, which is why I was really concerned about getting the bonding surface prepared so that it'll work well in the layup. But yeah, using that set of molds that we made a couple videos back, we're gonna try to make a board using this as a base material. Will it bond? Will we be able to smooth it out? Will it take wax and be able to slide down the hill? Who knows? Not me, but we're gonna find out together. With any luck, it'll work, and this will be a technique that we can use going forward. And if not, we just have to experiment a little bit more. But thank you so much for sticking along for the journey. Hit the subscribe button so you can come back and see how the rest of this harebrained scheme works out. I really appreciate you stopping by and watching as we try to experiment with all these different ways of making boards at home. So thanks again and until next time, I'll see you soon. I missed.